une présentation de Moreau. Moi, je suis Paul, je suis le CEO de Moreau. Mais je vais parler en anglais, si bon. My, my apologies for that. So what our company is about, we are a vision tech company. We tend to provide technology to improve people's vision. And we try to electrify glasses um, by adding liquid crystal-based lenses, as you've seen. The company is very small. We are 25 people, quite diverse. We have um, more women than men, which is very exceptional for technology companies. We have a lot of nationalities. We have a pilot line in Ghent, which is very close to Paris. You're always welcome to visit us. And um, we have good investors. And we have IMAC, which is a Liti. Vous connaissez Liti? This is the counterpart of Liti. And we also with Merck in Germany. And our vision is actually very easy. We want to improve your vision. Very simple vision that we have. And that we do by electrifying glasses. And here, I hope that we can agree together that <clears throat> here I wanted to create FUT for the opticians, but there are no opticians. Um, you know what FUT is, fear, uncertainty, and doubt. The opticians don't believe that electronic eye glasses will happen in smart eyewear. They think it's a toy. But I think you know better than us that technology progress is driving the electrification of glasses. It's possible with this. Um, I have a technology background myself, and I can tell you in 10 years' time, from when I started almost the company till now today, you have about 30x more processing power that you can integrate in a single die. This single die here that you see is a very tiny chip, which is, I think, one square millimeter, that can do full voice processing. It's called company Sentient. So if you want to have Alexa integrated on your eyeglasses, this chip can do it and it can do it at 100 microwatt, which is really, really low power consumption. You have nice chip seal packaging technology, that's where I come from originally, that allows you to integrate eye tracking, very small, this is a one millimeter square cube from um, AMS Technologies in Austria, that you can use for eye tracking at low power consumption. Battery technologies, you are familiar with it. My earrings from uh, Apple, iPods have long battery life, sufficient life, and I think over the next five years, we will have a 3x increase in battery density, which means we can stuff much more functionality in a very beautiful form factor. And then for the optical part, it's actually very cheap replication technologies for nano replication of optics that's becoming available. It costs a few dollars to make. And who has a Mercedes S-Class? Nobody has a Mercedes S-Class? Well, a Peugeot aussi. Peugeot uh, 2008 has a 3D screen in there, which is built with very cheap nanoscale replication technologies, which allows us to add more functionality to eyeglasses. So I think technology definitely is making it possible to integrate more functionality in eyeglasses today. But also the timing is right for electrification. And here, this is just my view on the business. Big tech is heavily into eyewear. They see Meta particularly, he wants to electrify eyeglasses. It's very simple because he considers that as the next smartware, smartphone platform. He needs to do that because he's been excluded from, for instance, the iOS system. So he needs to own his own platform in order to push his advertising. Hence, Mark Zuckerberg is really, really all in on electronic eyewear. But I can tell you from our discussions that we have as an electronics company, all the other players are considering both AR and VR applications. And in the next coming four to five years, they're going to be a big push. They have some challenges, namely distribution of optics. It's very difficult. An Apple product you want to roll out worldwide overnight, that may not be feasible directly with AR glasses. I think. Essilor Luxotica heavily invested in electronic glasses. You have Ray-Ban stories there. It may be not the perfect product yet. I think it's a fantastic product, to be honest. It has a lot of uh, uh, things, improvements that you can build on top in terms of software. But the eyewear industry has been very fragmented. You can just look around to how many frame manufacturers there are and how many less manufacturers and how many different opticians. There is one company that is not fragmented, and that is Essilor Luxotica. They can put electronic eyewear, and they can roll it out in less than a month time. They can put it in every store across the world, and that differentiates them. 
And I think Del Vecchio understood that very well, and that's why he's investing significantly in electronic eyeglasses. Which means that all the rest also have to move. And we are very fortunate that Carl Zeiss Ventures has invested in us, because they also see that electronic eyeglasses is going to happen in the future. Any questions on this? Everybody convinced? Oh, thank you. Let's move on. So in electronic eyeglasses, there are obviously different paths that you can follow. And one of the big paths that people are pursuing is augmented reality. But at Moro, we are following a vision-first approach. We want to build eyeglasses that improve people's visual acuity and that help to improve eye health. And that's a choice that we very deliberately made after a meeting here in Paris with a very important person who told us that that's the way we should go. Then the secondly is we need to support individuality because very important for people, and just look at the opticians walking around on the trade show, is how they look and what eyeglasses are going to look like. It's very important, so you need to make sure that you don't make bulky glasses, that it needs to be very elegant and nicely integrated, and that it supports individuality. I think that's very critical to make um, electronic eyeglasses work. And our view is everything that does not support improving eye health, you just kick it out. Because it's too big, too bulky, you just remove it. And then finally, of course, the product needs to be comfortable, easy to wear, and nice so that people want to do it. The first product that in this tradition we released uh, last year in Belgium is what we call autofocal glasses. And this is actually the next generation of multifocals. Multifocals today are designed for distance to very up close, 20 centimeters, and that's a trade-off that comes with narrow corridors, a limited field of view. What we do is by adding an electronic system, we can switch on and off an electronic boost and we can make eyeglasses that work in any situations that are more comfortable to wear, less distortions, easier adapting to, and that's basically, they're safer. And what we really see is that our customers today are appreciating that a lot. Um, maybe just very briefly repeating it. This is the best type of multifocal glass or progressive that you sell, from distance to near. The older you get, the more distortions you get, the closer your field of view becomes. And then you have people complaints. People do complain about multifocal glasses, despite what the industry says. There are people that have adaptation issues, about 10 to 15% of the population. There is a loss of peripheral vision. If you're driving, you can't see your sight mirrors. Um, you can't lay down in the sofa, watch the TV screen. It doesn't work with multifocals. Um, there is really poor ergonomics when you look at the, at the screen. A big screen with multifocals doesn't work. Definitely if you have your arthrosis, you're getting old. There's a 2x higher risk of falling when wearing multifocals versus regular glasses. And we fix all that. And we know you can have a look here at our demo. We have also a boot later on. But we switch focal length electronically, and that really makes a difference. Faster adaptation, wider field of view in all situations, and just higher comfort. You don't need to believe me. We have been soft selling our products over the last year. We tested over 100 users side by side with their regular progressive glasses. And basically, um, there's some YouTube movies you can have a look at, but everybody says our glasses are much easier adapting to. That's obvious why. I mean, we are wider corridors, less addition to the bottom. They have a wider field of view. The electro-optical zone is wide, and that has been a challenge for many players. It's very wide, and we have, uh, it's effective and sharp. And a lot of the customers are effectively converting into paying customers today. We are at the beginning. Most, like, we are at the beginning of revolutionizing this multifocal technology. The first product that we launched was a 20 millimeter tunable lens, quite narrow. We increased it to 24 millimeter. That will be available later on this year. And next year, we'll be launching an office glass product, which is a combination of office glasses, computer glasses, and regular glasses in one. By 2024, we want to push the width of the tunable lens to around 30 millimeter, which gives a much wider acceptance even overall in the market. Any questions? I will wait until I get questions. <laughs> no, so obviously, we're really at the beginning of something. And, you know, style and individualization matter. We have a collection. We have 168 different frames which we designed together with Hoot, which is a very high-end Belgian designer. 
3D printed frames, so you can see them there as materialized as well. Obviously, this is a starting point, and we are looking for more partners to help us bring a wider collection and integrating this collection and, and bring it to the market. And that basically is my summary slide. I think here at Silmo, what are we doing? We're looking at very enthusiastic opticians that are keen in helping distribute the product. We are also looking at frame manufacturers that are interested in working with us that see the upside of doing some electronic glasses to differentiate. And I think here, what we also want to have is a, a platform at Silmo to discuss what will be the future of eyeglasses and how we can collaborate. Because I think it's a big effort to convince everybody here that electronic eyeglasses will happen and that brings benefit to the end user. And that basically is my very short presentation to you guys.